see, can I get this all the way over that? Boom. Here we go. Where are my pens? Here we go. And get some colors going, get some pens, get my coffee being made. Here we go. This is gonna be fun. Let me know if you guys have any problems with the audio or anything like that. Um, I might have to dial it back a little bit. Uh, just let me know. I got my coffee being made. We're gonna give it a couple minutes. Hey Richard, what's up? How's it going? Got my got my I don't know what you call this, like a glass board, whiteboard, I don't know. Something we're gonna we're gonna get some diagrams going, get some numbers up on the board. We're gonna talk about this with real numbers. Hey Ed, how's it going? Uh oh. What do we got here? <laughs> Let me turn this off. I don't know why my phone dinged. Actually, it might be my computer dinging. Let me know if my computer dings and you guys hear it through the microphone. But we'll probably wait to about the five minute mark and then, and then I'll get started, you know, kind of explaining my process, explaining all my different projects and different avenues of stuff. Cake. I've already started, guys. Guys, I already started. I already started with the cake. Already started. Oh, my, my, my quarter of the way through it, quarter of the way through it, and I'm sweating. It is like 80 something degrees in my office. It's terrible, terrible. Henzo Gracie Fort Lee. Oh, what's up guys? Shut that, can I shut that? Can I not shut that? Nope, it's stuck open. Oh well, now I got my coffee. Even though it's 80 degrees, I always drink hot coffee. It's the way to go. Oh. <laughs> Jack Unesca, what's up? Hopefully you're still training hard with your brother. Hopefully. Hopefully. But we're gonna get we're gonna get down and dirty, okay? With some with some programs, with some things I think that could really benefit and turn USA Judo around, turn it into a profit center and also turn it into a powerhouse in the world of judo, right? Because I actually believe we have some of the best athletes in the world. It's, it's a system problem and it's broken. We're gonna talk about how we can fix it, okay? And we're gonna go with our plans for today all the way through into the future, okay? And we're gonna basically be going over some numbers. And again, I'm just using some made up numbers for this, okay? I wanna be super, super clear with that, these are just totally fabricated, right? But they'll give you some realistic guidelines as to how much you could spend, how much you could potentially make, and a good way to spend money hiring people that generate a source of revenue. What's up, Rubix? Nice, nice, Jack. I'm glad you're still able to train. More than I can say for me. Oh, a cold coffee, that's like a female drink. Hot coffee all the time. I don't care if it's 110 degrees outside. Hot coffee. Got a couple more minutes. A couple more minutes, we're at the four minute mark. What's up, Dominic? So like I said, we're gonna talk about a bunch of different things on how we can fix this problem going on in American Judo. And some people, some people are gonna get super offended. Did you get cake? Guys, guys, cake always. I'm, I'm like halfway, I'm like quarter of the way through this thing. Don't worry about it, I'm hyped up on sugar. I'm hyped up on sugar. I got more sugar in my coffee, I'm, I'm ready to go. I don't care if this takes three, four hours. Cold coffee. Pff. Pff. Coffee's cold. And guys, my spelling is terrible. My math might be a little off. Again, this is conceptual. Right? None of us, none of us have the actual books to USA Judo to see what is even realistically possible. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just throwing out some numbers. I'm gonna put some other numbers as to how they can hit some goals and generate some revenue and actually help 
the American people develop their judo and run professional systems. That's what we're going to do today. Okay, so forgive me for my terrible penmanship. I haven't written anything since like high school, since I'm part of like the tech age. Did this take you a while to plan? A lifetime. I can't tell you how many times me, Jimmy, and Chris Kelly have gone back and forth with this over and over and over again. And the reason why, okay, the reason why I'm doing it here on YouTube and I'm putting it out here for everybody is I am sick and tired of all the people coming up to me at the junior nationals, at the senior nationals, at all this terrible stuff. And they're just, they're like doing it behind closed doors. They're like pulling you off this. Like, hey man, come here, come here. I got to talk to you. I got to talk to you. What do we do about this? How do we fix it? What do we do? And then they go back and they tell a completely different story to somebody else. And I'm tired. I'm tired of my story getting twisted. Okay. I got an idea. I got a plan and I want to throw it out there for everybody. If you hate it by the time I'm done, no problem. No problem. I have my opinion. You have yours. And I don't care. I don't care what happens. I just want my opinion to be heard. I've gone back and forth with back and forth with Chris Kelly, Jimmy. We've, we've bounced off so many different ideas. This is kind of one that we've kind of landed on. And I can't tell you how many times my phone rang today when I made this live post and I made this schedule. People were calling me off the hook, texting me, trying to figure out what I was going to do and how I was going to approach this situation. Travis for Senate. No, thank you. No, thank you. Would I do a seminar for cake and coffee? Um, probably not. Probably not. But if it's not present, I probably won't come back. So we're somewhere in the middle there. So I would do one without it, but I would come back. Guaranteed. Even if it was a terrible seminar and I hated everybody there, I would come back if you had cake and coffee. But I'm like a super basic person, right? Like I don't, I don't do like the fancy coffees. Like I'm okay with like the can of Folgers and just like, like I, here, here's what I got right here. I don't even know what this is. I got, I got this like K cup on the bottom shelf of the supermarket, right? I paid like 20 bucks for like 90 pods. I don't even care. Don't even care. It's got caffeine in it, even though it's not a lot. I drink coffee all day, so I don't mind that it's weaker because I, I just like the taste of coffee. Okay, I'm going to give it like two more minutes just to like... <sighs> yeah, if you guys need anything, right? So right now, um, if you guys are looking for like online seminars, like for your schools, um, individual private lessons, individual video sessions, you can go to p24judo.com. And you can book out time slots with myself, Jimmy Pedro, doesn't matter, right? The prices are up there. And right now they're 50% off uh, while COVID is going on. So if you need somebody to like host a one hour Zoom call with your school, head over there, book your time slot, pay for it. Or if you're looking for like a one-on-one -on -one coaching session to do some like video review type stuff, head over there. You can purchase that as well. And then we'll just get in contact, shoot some emails back and forth to find times that work for everybody. Black Rifle Coffee. Richard, that's the second time you said that. I feel like you mentioned that coffee like a week or so ago. Christian, do you think USJA and USJF will ever dissolve or be absorbed into a single organization? I can't speak to like the far off future, like, you know, 100 years from now, 50 years from now, but in the near future, Definitely not happening, but I also don't think it needs to. I also don't think it needs to. Okay. And that's, and that's part of my plan here. Part of my plan. I don't even know what ice water cake is. I might have to Google that later. Okay. Okay. Let's get started. Let's get started. Now I'm going to start, I'm going to start off with saying, I'm going to hurt some people's feelings right now. I'm going to hurt some people's feelings, but it's okay. It's okay. I get it. I get it. But remember my plan, my plan is to service the 80% of judokas in the United States, not a hundred percent of the judokas in the United States. Okay. We got to work with the resources that we have. And because we've neglected to grow judo in America over the past like 10, 20, 30 years, 
we gotta we gotta stop the bleeding. Okay, we just gotta we gotta draw a knife, like boom, cut it off, cut the dead weight. It is what it is, right? And here and here's where I'm drawing the line. Okay, I hate to say it, I hate to say it, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna cut the line, and I'm gonna say everybody that is currently a junior, under 23. Or senior, I can't make a three. It's it's like crimpled. My my judo fingers don't work. So I gotta I gotta go, I gotta go like one, two, and then three. Okay, so the third one is seniors. You guys are dead to me. Dead to me. I'm sorry. You're done. Your judo careers are a hundred percent over. You're on your own. There, I said it. That's part of my plan. I'm gonna cut the dead weight and say I don't have the resources to help you. Okay? It is your job as a junior, senior. Wow, my hands are already getting covered in this marker stuff because I was like practicing today, trying to like write on a whiteboard because it's been a while. Normally I use this for like notes and stuff, but anyways, so it's been, it's been, you know, a while, okay? But at the same time, right, senior athletes, seniors, where's my pen? I already lost it, okay? Senior athletes. Senior elite athletes, okay? These people right here, that is terrible handwriting, by the way. I don't even think you could read that, but that's okay. I'm gonna talk about it. This is just for my sake to remember my notes. Okay, we have our senior, our senior elite athletes. Those people, those people are self-supported, okay? So when I tell you that I am 100% ignoring them, I'm saying, hey, you're an adult, you're an adult, welcome to the real world, okay? Solve your own problems, okay? You're not my problem anymore. The USOC, the USOC, when, when I, when I was an athlete, when I ended, when we ended in 2016, I believe, don't quote me on here, don't quote me, I don't wanna see anybody like, no, it was really this, it was a big number, okay? When it ended in 2016, the USOC funds to USA Judo was around like 620K a year, a year. And that money goes towards the development of winning international events. A portion, a portion, I would say, I would say somewhere around like 15% of that money went into the lower level judos, okay? Your juniors, your cadets, some, your under 23 could be considered a senior at this, for this sake of this argument, right? But what happens is, is with this money, with this money, you have to write out programs that say like, blah, 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 world championships, Paris, Germany, Azerbaijan, trip to Spain for a camp. You gotta write out all these programs and it adds up to equal this number. Now, when you screw up as a senior athlete, when you completely screw up, okay, and your results start dropping, guess what happens? This number, this number right here, goes from 620 down to 540. 540K a year. You're basically out 100K because you screwed up in year one and you underperformed on the previous year. See, the USOC bases its funds on a few events, not the whole calendar, a few events. They base it on Pan Ams, specifically Pan Am Games, that's like a benchmark for them, the World Championships and Olympic Games, that's it. So without medals in those areas, having medals from the previous years this number dwindles year after year, okay? Every year that, that number just goes down, okay? And there's arguments, right? The high performance, whoever's in charge of high performance in USA Judo, he shall not be named. It's like Voldemort, don't name him because you get in trouble. But the person in charge of high performance can go to the USOC at any point and they can argue on the behalf of the senior athlete, okay? They can argue on behalf of the senior athletes and say, hey, but look, we don't have a world championship medal, but maybe you medaled in Paris. Maybe you medaled in Germany. Maybe you took fifth at Grand Slam Russia. Maybe you took seventh at this event. And you try to make a case to keep this number 
where it is, when it's not an event that you're supposed to win, okay? Because they only care about the three, right? So if you win another one, it's kind of irrelevant, okay? And to back that up, to back that up, in 2014, in 2014, January 1, right? Oh, really quick. That 540, okay, that 540 and that 15%, that's why we take notes, the 15% over here for the juniors and cadets, it's now 15% of 540. So even if, even if your juniors and your cadets are winning world titles, but your seniors are screwing up, as this number goes down, this number goes down. Because at the end of the day, the reason why they're giving this to you is because they care about this. Remember, the USOC's job really at the number one, top of the heap, Olympic medals. That's it. That's what they're paying for. There's a guy in a room, okay? He's probably really skinny or really fat, got some glasses, super nerdy, okay? Really likes Excel. He's prob that's probably like what he looks like. <laughs> Okay, wears a button up all the way down, no tie though, but like tan slacks, right? Brown belt, okay? He's probably crunching numbers and he's saying, hey, if I take my big budget from the USOC and I got, let's say I got like a billion dollars, okay? How many medals can you buy with a billion dollars? Some sports, super cheap because they're guaranteed, right? If you look at swimming, right? Swimming, that is totally misspelled, but it doesn't matter. Swimming, okay? They can win a ton of medals for the amount of money that the USOC gives them, right? So when they're looking at the stats and looking at the numbers, they're taking their super large budget and they're dividing it up based on how many medals can they get. And if you're underperforming and you're a high-risk sport where you're not really guaranteed medals, they'll give you something. They'll give you a little piece of the pie, okay? But it's up to you as an NGB, a national governing body, it's up to you to support yourself. So for me, my plan, my plan starts here. I'm cutting the dead weight, okay? You seniors, as of today, you seniors, you're 100% on your own. That's not my fault, it just is what it is. You have to figure it out. USA Judo has said and has mandated that, hey, you want your personal coach to go? He can go. You want to pick your own events, pick your own events, figure it out. You're in charge of your career. That's what they've done. So I'm saying, okay, no problem. I'm on board. I'm on board. We're not going to develop any resources to you seniors. We're done. Cutting it, okay? I'm taking that dead weight and I'm chopping it off saying, you guys tell me what you need. I'll get it done, but at minimum effort, maximum efficiency, the judo way. We're going to do as little as possible for them right? Because that seems to be the mentality for everybody in this country. We're going to do as little as possible. And then they're going to take it, they're going to take it upon themselves to figure it out. And the reason why they do this, in my opinion, is because some of us have scraped through. We have dragged ourselves from nothing and we've accomplished Olympic success. Not due to like the actual like hard work of the organization, but because of the volunteers that have come together to build a team and a structure in order to succeed. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So my, my first task, if I'm in charge, if I get hired, my first task is I hire a coach. Coach, I'm gonna call him Coach One. Okay, his job, his number one job is to the cadets, okay? Cadet coach, the reason for that is because he's a salaried person, okay? He's on salary, okay? And I'm gonna pay this coach, I'm gonna pay this guy, I'm gonna pay him an actual salary, okay? Like an entry level salary. We're gonna go 75K a year for this guy. And just, just to be the cadet coach, that's his job. That's his number one job, okay? His benchmark is how well are my cadets doing on the world stage? Okay, notice what I said. I said the world stage. I don't care. I don't care. Oh, Christian, thank you for signing up for a one-on-one -on -one video review session. Awesome. Make sure you got your video ready. And then we'll, we'll, get, we'll take care of that. We'll find somebody to do that for you. I'm not sure if you get to select your coach or not. We'll figure it out. Okay, but his number one job here is to win medals. Win medals on the world 
stage, okay? 100%, 100% authority. Nobody, nobody can tell this guy what to do. If he says, hey, hey, I don't care. If you can't make it, you're not going. He gets to build his training program. He gets to build his schedule. He gets to do whatever he wants to do right here. Right here. Jam EJ, USA Judo 501C does not reflect this approach. If they did what you are starting to outline, I want my dues back. This is not a promise they made to me when they took my dues. 100% irrelevant. 100% irrelevant. Your dues, your membership card, right? Your $70 a year to pay for USA Judo. That money goes into whatever it needs to go into. It can pay for staff. It can run events. It can do whatever it wants to do. But if I go to a, if I go to a sponsor, if I go to a sponsor and I say, hey man, I want to hire a guy. I want to hire a guy for 75K a year. If I want to go to the bank and take out a business loan for 75K a year, I can do this. Regardless of that 501c3. I can do this. I can pay a guy, not with your membership dues, because that goes somewhere else. I can pay a guy with money I raise to do this job. 100%. That can happen. And if you don't want to be a member, your $70, no problem. I'll send it back to you. I'll, I'll get a check. I'll fill it out. Boom. Done. Gone. Go for it. Have it back. No big deal. Don't even bother. Remember, I don't care about the people that, that are upset. 100%. I know. I know some people are going to hate it. I know some people aren't going to like it. But that's okay. We got to stop the bleeding. And we got to fix it. We have to fix the problem. That's it. So here we go. I got a guy. 75K a year. My job when I hire this guy is to go, hey. How do I get my money back for this? What do I do? Because I can't just throw 75K a year at you and then just have you coaching. Because this, this really isn't a full-time job, which is why I'm starting here. Because all these kids, they're in school. Like most of the calendar year they're spoken for, right? But that doesn't mean we can't do other things with them throughout the calendar year, but it's not worth this. The reason why I'm gonna pay this is because the other half of his job is gonna be a national clinician, right? He's gonna go around and he's gonna go seminar. He's gonna go on a seminar tour for me as a representation of USA Judo. And they're gonna teach a system a system of judo, nationwide, nationwide. They got a system of judo going, okay? Now look, this is where the math comes into play, okay? I'm gonna get my straight edge here. Let me dump this pen thing out. We're gonna get a straight edge going here. I don't even care, here we go. Boom, straight edge. There's one line. There's two lines. Three, we're gonna get like a tic-tac-toe thing going here. There we go. Okay. That's good enough. We can see this. Now look. Now look. Here we go. <clears throat> We're going to go 50, 75, and 100. Okay? On the top row. Okay? I should probably draw a line and then extend this because it's been a while since I made a graph. Okay? Down this line, we're going to do the exact same number breakdown. Okay? We're gonna go 50, 75, and 100, okay? And what this represents, and it doesn't matter which way you slice it, it doesn't matter, okay? We're gonna go a cost, and then number of people going down and going across, okay? So I got a number of participants and a cost as associated with it, right? Now look, we're gonna plot a calculator here, okay? And I'm gonna go 50 times 50, boom. We got 2,500 bucks. Whoop, 
let me change that so it doesn't do that again. There we go. 50 times 75. I got 37, 50, and 5K. Boom, right here. We start at 37, 50. 75 times 75 equals 5,625. 7,500. 5,000. 7,500. 10K. 10K. Okay, look. Now look, my guy, my guy that I'm paying 75K a year to, okay, they're 52 weeks in a year. 52 weeks in a year. Let's say I want him to do 18, 18 seminars around the country. Okay, all sponsored, sponsored by USA Judo, which means that depending on the price pool that we pick, all of this money that's generated from the members to attend the national coaches seminar for athletes, okay, goes back into the pool for USA Judo because he's a salaried employee, okay? He does, it doesn't go into his pocket. It's gonna go right back into the pool to pull from, to pay for trips, to pay for events, to pay for merchandising, okay, and to pay for some of these other programs, right? Now look, we have 18 months. Let's redraw this over here. Let's redraw this over here, okay? We're gonna go right across the top. We're gonna come straight down. Boom, we're gonna come across again. I messed up again. Should have drawn a line right there. Okay, we'll figure this out. But look, now let's take our cost again. 50, 75, and 100. Whoops, messed that up. Where'd my racer go? Moving too fast. I don't wanna be here till 3 a.m. But if I will, if I have to, we're gonna get this out so people can rewatch it. 50, 75, 100, okay? Now, now what, you can, now what you can do is you can take this number in this box, right? 2,500 bucks and multiply it by 18 for the number of clinics that he has to do around, around the United States, okay? We're at 45K, $45,000 is what I'm gonna make. But let's keep going, because there's a better row in here, okay? There's a better row. Let's go 3750 times 18. We're at 67,500, okay? Five, 5,000 times 100. Nope. What is this, 50, yeah, 5,000 times 18 is 90K, 90K a year. Let's keep going, 75, which is 3750 times 18, 67,500. Now let's go 5625 times 18, $101,250. Seventy five hundred times eighteen, a hundred and thirty five thousand dollars. And now I'm gonna ignore this bottom row because it's not even the one I want. It's not even the one I want. So what I'm gonna do is I would pick this row right here. Okay, I'm gonna pick this one. The reason being, the reason being, it's the lowest dollar amount. It's the lowest dollar amount. Seventy five dollars for the weekend. Okay, that's four two hour sessions with a deemed national coach that making 75K a year teaching the cadets that can make me somewhere between 67,000 and $135,000 for my investment of 75K a year. Now what that's gonna do is that's not all of it, right? Because 18, 18 events have to be paid for. It's gonna cost you about $1,000 to go on each of these trips nationwide, depending on where this coach lives. But overall, it's gonna cost you about 1,000 bucks for a hotel for the weekend, car rental for the weekend, food for the weekend, and airfare to get to where he's going. He might be able to drive to some places, but at the end of the day, you gotta plan on spending 18 additional K to get this guy to these events. 
Now, with that being said, with that being said, there's budgets within that USOC money to pull from to fund cadet national training camps and coaches, right? There's, there's actually a line item in there to send coaches places, okay? So part of the money that you would need to raise in order to pay this guy wouldn't even be this high, right? That's an end cap salary that he's going to make. You can use, throughout the calendar year, you can use funds from the USOC, part of that 540 k that they're getting, right? I don't know what it actually is, but it's somewhere in there, right? What they're getting, you can use some of those funds to fund this guy's salary. I bet you, I bet you by the end of it, you could probably hire a cadet coach for somewhere around, I don't know, I'm going to say like 60 k all in 60k all in. I think you could pull out 15k for part of his pay for going to like the cadet world, going to cadet like Pan Ams if he wanted to go, but by going to like cadet tournaments in Europe, you can pull some of his salary from the USOC money to make sure he gets that, okay? Now look. Now look, this is step 1. This is step 1 and what I'm going to do with step one, after I hire my guy, right? And remember, remember, I don't need, I don't need 75K or 60K in the bank. I just need his two weeks pay to get this started. And if you're smart, if you're smart, you could set this up all predetermined, right? You could get a national camp going, right? To raise funds where people pay to show up where you could raise, look at the numbers I just threw out, you could raise 3,000, 4,000, up to $10,000, no problem, no problem at all. You could raise that to start the fund of this guy, right? And then you could even cut him a deal and say, hey, what if you traveled all the way around the, the country and then you kept 50% of everything you make and we'll pay for all your trips? Because what we're doing, what we're doing is we're educating people on a system of judo, which brings me to my next, my next thing here that I would do, okay? So step one, Jimmy gave me this name earlier today, but we start Project Gold, okay, as step one. That's hiring a cadet coach full-time, whose sole job, all he does is judo. He has to go to the cadets, and he has to manage the whole team, manage everything. And as he's traveling around, teaching all these seminars nationwide, he's scouting. He's finding all the best talent because a lot of the times the talented kids, they're not necessarily the ones winning the junior events, right? There are dark horses out there that we just don't know about. There are kids, right, that probably wrestle, play football, they dabble in judo, that's a yellow belt that might show up to one of these events that that coach sees and says, hey man, why don't I invite you out to this thing? You got some talent, I think you could be somebody, right? You scout and you keep them in the sport. You give them a little bit right? Let them know they got some skill and you can bring them into the fold. Okay. So that's step one, project goal. Jimmy gave me that name earlier today, but that's step one. Okay. Super easy to fund generates revenue for the business. Okay. Step number two. Okay. Promotions. A promotion system. The reason why this is so important, you guys are like, well, why do we need a promotion system? USA Judo has one. USA Judo borrowed one from a French guy, okay? As a Judo Olympian, I couldn't pass the white yellow belt test. I remember looking at it on a giant, like, three by five cardboard cutout, and I was like, I don't even know what I'm looking at. I have no idea, okay? If you guys haven't seen it yet, there's a video out there, okay, of the Israeli coach, right? Super famous guy, super talented coach, mind you. Right, he coached Yard and Jerby and a few of the other players. Okay, won you know Israel's first Olympic medal. And he said, and he said in an IGF interview, he said, We have to do it the Israeli way, not the Japanese way, not the Russian way, not the French way. We have to do it the Israeli way. We, as Americans, have to do it the American way. Okay, we have to figure it out. We have to decide what is super important for our competitors, okay? So we have a comp system, super important, but it has to be decided that you have to be able to rank underneath, 
okay? That's step one. You gotta be able to rank your competition students, okay? You have to be able to rank your martial artist, okay? That's super important as well. You gotta be able to rank it. You have to have this system in place, okay? The problem with judo right now, right now, the problem with judo right now is it only cares about one thing. It only cares about one thing. It cares about this guy right here, the comp guy. But you know what? In every martial art, that is such a small percentage of the population, right? And that's our big thing is we only care about the results. We don't care about everybody else. We don't care about the kata. We don't care about the martial artists. We don't care about the history. We don't care about this. We want to know who's going to win national championships. But you know what? At the end of the day, we got to grow this sport in the country. You know what does that? Martial arts. Martial arts does that. People get it. People get that there's like an Olympic thing, right? But look at wrestling. They got folk style. They don't do freestyle. They don't do Greco. They do folk style. They made it the American way, right? Something that is safe for our kids, safe for schools, simple to teach, simple to understand, and just about anybody can do it, okay? So we have promotion systems now for competition people. We have a promotion system for martial artists, okay? But there's a third one. There's a third one, super important, okay? Super important that could lead to millions of dollars. Millions of dollars, okay? Here we go. Here we go. Judo promotion system. Self-defense. Self-defense. You have to teach the common person, the common person that walks into that dojo, hey man, you take my sport, you'll be able to defend yourself. Okay, you'll be able to defend yourself. Now, now mind you, you might think I'm crazy. You might think I'm super crazy here, but look, but look, this program, what do you think jujitsu is selling, right? Right here, self-defense. And I can tell you right now, in 95% of all jujitsu schools, they don't throw strikes. They don't, they don't do that. But this right here, this phrase, Self-defense, this right here, is what keeps all those other martial arts alive. Aikido, Krav Maga, right? All those types of sports that don't have this. They don't have that Olympic thing that they can strive to, okay? And the great thing about being able to service all three individuals, because when somebody walks into your club, they're gonna want one of these three categories. They're either gonna to wanna to compete, they're either just gonna to wanna to do it for the martial arts, okay, the holistic aspect, or they're gonna to wanna to be able to feel like they can defend themselves and take care of themselves just in case something goes wrong. They wanna feel like they have the power to protect themselves, okay? So you wanna be able to service all three people. And the reason why this is so important and the selling point to all of these is all three of them can be sold they can all be sold on the olympic movement which is powerful it is super super powerful to be able to tell your stay at home mom or your stay at home dad that's practicing judo in the noon class at a professional school that says hey man you're a part of this you're a part of this bigger picture. Your dues, your involvement in the community is what strives this guy to win his Olympic medal. Because of the American support that he feels back home, he is driven to success. You can sell that. You can sell that to people, okay? And you can actually, you can actually hit a massive target market here. Like forget the school system, right? Forget the school system. You could actually control most of the martial arts right here because you are one of the few, you are one of the few that has this as a selling point. Right now, judo is only selling this in America. 
That's it. That's all they're selling. But if you could sell the other two along with this and make that guy who's 45 that trains in Oklahoma, like he's a part of Travis Stevens and he's been to camps where Travis has been because he's been to the national system, right? Because I hired that coach, remember? I hired that guy that went around, right? That you spoke to who coached that guy. You have that connection. You're a degree of separation away from that Olympic medalist, okay? The stay-at-home person, right? Super valuable, super valuable, super profitable, right? Because what you do with all of this, right? What you do with all of this is you build a platform, right? We're not done, we build a platform. James, thank you for the super chat. See, right there, proves my point. Guy does BJJ for self-defense in his 40s. I love it. I love it. Has no desire for the Olympics. Probably has no desire for a world title. But it's fun. It's a great workout. And guess what? He feels like he can defend himself. Right? That's such a powerful marketing tool to the people. Not true. I don't need the school system for any of this. Don't need the school system for any of this. It's right. You made a comment earlier about like policies and politics. Like we're not talking about that. We're saying, hey, I get put in charge. This is what I'm doing, right? I'm not saying it's possible. Like I said, I don't sit behind USA Judo's door. It's like a fly on the wall, moms cross going. I know every, all the ins and outs, right? There might be some red tape. There might be some red tape that you can't get through in order to do this, right? But if USA Judo can't because of some red tape, the JF can, right? I remember when I was in Rio, a week after I had won, I sat down and I was like, how can I help Judo? What can I do right now to help Judo? What would be the most beneficial thing? So what I did was I wrote a letter and an email to the president of the USJF and I said, hey, do you, can I have a moment of your time? I have this idea. I think I can be super helpful for your organization. He sent me back an email and he said, sure, what is it? I sent him back a one page document that said, hey, pay me, pay me $50,000 a year, 50K a year. And what you're gonna get from me, what you're gonna get from me is you're gonna get 10 seminars, okay? At any Udon Shikai you choose throughout the calendar year, you plan it, you figure it out, all the proceeds from these events would go back to the host Udon Shikai. Because the JF does this thing where they spend like $350,000 or $300,000, whatever that number is, where they give every Udon Shikai $5,000. So what I did is I said, hey, pick your 10 best, give me, because I need a job, right? I'm broke. I've been fired from USA Judo and the USOC because my contract ended the day of the Olympics. Okay. I fought the Olympic games jobless. Okay. So to speak. So at the games, I was like, Hey, what do I need to live? I said, boom, right here. Here's what I can do for you. Okay. I can afford to live. I can invest my time into judo. And I said, all that money that comes back. Okay. You can charge whatever you want. You can charge whatever you want. But remember, you put 100 kids on a mat, 100 kids on a mat that pay 50 bucks, all that money goes back into the system. So essentially what the JF could have done was wrote me a check, okay? Every time I did one, they could have wrote me a check, paid for all my travel. And then even if I didn't get the 5K, even if I didn't get it, they could have put money back into their system, got me out to their thing to teach judo and teach a system of judo to their people. But at the end of the day, when I sent him that letter, I didn't even get a response back. Didn't even get an email. Not even a no thank you, we're not even interested. Just ignored. Couldn't even figure out why. Uh, Christian, I am super aware of other systems in other countries, okay, which have given me great ideas, right? They've given me ideas, they've given me concepts, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit, right? But what I'm doing is I'm not copying any one of the other successful programs, right? People are always like, hey, put it in the school systems, right? All these other places do it. Well, hey man, the United States is like the size of all of Europe. 
Think about that. The United States is like the size of Europe. You want, that's like, hey, put the school system in all of Europe and then have one organization figure out how to run it. That's insane. We, we can't even figure out how to get our coaches to speak the same language and people want it in the school systems. My program, this program gets you there, right? Because what I'm doing is I've started Project Gold with the coach who's taught the same way to every place. He's got this system down. He's teaching everybody the same thing. He's using the same words. He's teaching the same techniques. He's teaching the same steps. He's getting people used to this message, right? Then what I do is I start this promotion system, right? And I start three areas of focus, okay? Remember, there's three areas. All three areas, all three areas generate a ton of revenue for the company because what I'm gonna do, EJ, super chat, thank you. Right there, boom. More grassroots participants can come from our ability to teach people to defend themselves. Problem is most Americans don't know what judo is 100%. You know why? Because we don't sell the self-defense aspect because nobody in this country has actually written it. Nobody's actually thought to themselves, hey man, how can I make a few dollars? Because you got to make a few dollars to run American judo the way these other countries do, right? If there's somebody out there, if there's somebody out there, stop me, that you know is going to write me a check you're going to write me a check for a million dollars to run USA Judo without needing to sell the self-defense aspect because that's what, that's what we can make as an organization by selling it, okay? And I've had a lot of conversation with a lot of rich people, okay? A ton. And every time I bring up Judo and every time we talk about it, it's like, yeah, I would love to donate to your cause. Boom, conversation stops, right? I've even gotten into so many phone calls and emails right? With people, right? No names, but with people that I've actually had to stop them talking and say, Hey man, if you don't write me a check today, right now, we've had enough conversations. We've talked the talk. We've walked the walk. I'm done with it. Write me a check today or I'm done because they're unsure. Everybody, everybody who's got money wants to spend the other guy's money, right? We're all good at spending other people's money, right? What I'm talking about is not asking, I'm talking about going to work, boots on the ground, and earning it, right? We're gonna earn the money, we're gonna earn the respect, and we're gonna show people how this can work. That's my plan. It's gonna take a lot of hard work, it's gonna take a lot of hours, but like I said, I've been in my office since like 7.30 this morning, right? Just finished my gym build out today, it's 9.18 at night, I'm ready. I'm wired, I've had my cake, I've had my coffee, I'm still drinking. I don't mind hard work. I don't mind. But here we go, promotion system, because I'm not done yet. Because once you create it, once you create it, that's not enough. It's not enough. You can't just, you can't just put it on paper and say, I'm done with it. That's not enough. What you have to do is you have to take that promotion system online. You gotta take it online. Okay, now look, you might think I'm crazy. You might think I'm crazy, right? Online this, online that, I get it. But hey, did you know, did you know that every time USA Judo, right? A secret, a secret, right? Somebody told me this, somebody told me this on the back of a bus overseas about how the USA Judo funds work and how they make some money and how they get a little bit extra cash. Did you know that the USOC pays money additionally on top of the USOC fund? Remember that 540? They pay an additional amount every month. I think it's every month, it might be every quarter. But they pay additional money for the number of online visitors to the website. Did anybody know that? That was told by me by the guy who should not be named right? When we were overseas on a bus, right? So every, every few thousand people, USA Judo gets an extra couple dollars. Now look, what happens, what happens when you go online with the promotion systems with videos and step-by-step -step instructions, okay? 
Now look, as a guy who has access to the back end of Judo Fanatics and some other powerful websites, right? If you haven't been to judofanatics.com, make sure you go. As a guy who has that kind of access, when people have access, and some of you guys have bought my DVDs, what do we do? We make sure that you do what with those DVDs? You go back online, you come to my site, because what does that do? That ranks me in Google, right? It ranks me in Google, because it says, hey man, this must be important. This website must be an authority, okay, in the martial arts space, because all these martial artists are headed here for this, okay? And guess what? Not only am I ranking in Google, where my website can be found easily, all my images can be found easy, all my videos on how to get good at something can all be found easily because everybody is going here, right? Now look, once you've done that and you've created this online system, guess what? Everybody pays for promotions. Pays for promotions. They pay for it. They pay for the ability to have that certification that says, hey, I am this rank and it matters. You have to provide value for people, okay? You have to provide value for this. It cannot be what it is today. It cannot just be this like little slip of paper that you get in the mail from USA Judo, okay? Or from your coach. Daddy, right there, look it. What is that, Sevy Lee, dude, 100%. Right, I'm not making this stuff up. Look at that. The four P's of marketing. Guys, it is simple stuff. It is not crazy. I am not just pulling this information out of nowhere. It exists. Other people are doing it. Why we're not doing it is well beyond me, okay? But look, but look, it's not that simple. It's not that simple because again, you can't, this all links together, right? And you don't have to you don't have to take 10 million dollars and just do it all at once, right? We're talking 5, 6, 7 years from now cuz what I'm doing is I'm actually planning on a, being a powerhouse in the world of judo. I want people to look across the map for an American judo player and I want them to respect the American flag. When they look across the map at an American having never seen them before, I want it to strike fear in them. No different than when somebody stands across the mat and looks at a Russian they've never seen or a Japanese player they haven't seen. There's a level of respect that goes into that and it is earned. It is not just given. You have to earn that and I want to earn it. I want to be able to 10 years from now put any American on the international field and I want that person to have the respect they deserve for being an American judo player and right now we don't have it and on top of that we don't deserve it. Because we don't work for it. We expect everybody just all oh, free, handout, donations. No. I want to go to work. Drop my pen. I want to go to work. Okay? So I got this online system. Okay? Online system. With that. With the online system. What we're going to do is we're going to create a database. A database for all athletes. All athletes who are a part of this system, the American Judo system, right? All those athletes will have a profile, okay? No different than like judobase.org for the international people. It'll have their national ranking, right? National ranking. It'll have their rank. It'll have their time and grade. So you'll be able to see like, hey, Joe Smoge an orange belt, but he's been an orange belt for like three years, why is that? You know why that's super important? Why is that super important, Travis? I don't understand. Why does it matter that Joe Smo's been an orange belt for like two and a half years, okay? Because if you had a database, if you had a database that could track that and send somebody, like, see, there it is again. There it is again. Man, what's with the handouts, people? Stop with the sponsorships, man. I deal with sponsorships because people send me emails all the time for sponsorships. And I'm like, guys, guys, what are you doing? What are you doing? We, we as an organization have not earned the right to be a sponsor, to have the UFC sponsor us. That's insane. Why would they ever do that? 
Look at somebody said 10,000 members. Why would the UFC, one of the largest organizations in the world, ever bother to sponsor an organization that has 10,000 members? Guys, we got to go to work first. We got to work as a community, as a staff together to raise the level of awareness. And that's what I'm doing. Okay, it takes hard work. I get it. Everybody's super nervous. Okay, but we're going to work. We're going to create this database for everybody. Once you become a member, once you become a member, you're in it. You're in it. Your profile is automatically created. Tracks everything. Everything. You're $70 a year. You're $70 a year is going to work. You know why? Because you're going to get the promotion system. You're going to get emails, you're going to get notifications, you're going to get quizzes all the time, all the time. I'm going to talk to you guys, right? I'm going to talk to everybody, right? I'm going to send you a happy birthday email. I'm going to send you a happy anniversary for your first year of being in the sport of judo. I'm going to send you an anniversary thing one month after your first promotion, just for the sake of it. Why not? I want you guys to feel good. I want you guys to feel not only good, not only good, but about being a part of something bigger, being a part of something bigger. I don't even know what Milan's saying anymore. I'm done. I don't know what you're saying. Community, schools, religions. I don't know. I don't know what that means. I must have missed something in the comments. But look, once we have this database, the reason why that orange belt, the reason why that orange belt being an orange belt for two years, it's gonna tell us something. Hey, why, why? There should be no reason why an orange belt should be an orange belt for two years in the sport of judo. They should have been promoted so they could feel good about their accomplishment and their dedication. So what that tells me is something happened in those two years in that span that says, hey, why did we lose this guy? What is it about this sport that we lost him? Right? And I get it. What you're saying is there could be a million reasons. There could be, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't look into it. Doesn't mean we shouldn't look into it because if there's a geographical region that you can see through the data that says, hey man, all of your green belts tend to drop off, right? We all say it. We all say it. We all tell people in the sport of judo, Man, when kids become teenagers, we lose them. We just lose them. But nobody, nobody actually takes a step back and says, hey, but how do we address it? How do we solve this problem to not lose our kids? Everybody, everybody's got an excuse. Everybody's got an excuse. Oh man, they wrestle. Oh, they're going to college. Oh, they got, they got a scholarship for this. Judo's not offering anything. We can't pay for their school. I don't get it. Why, why are we making excuses? I want a plan. I want a plan. I want the data to give me that plan. And this leads me to my next one. My next one, right? The next system. The next system that is super, super important. Okay? I just marked my wall. That's okay. Don't even care. Oh, I got to get my coffee. My next, my next system. Coaching. Coaching. I am going to develop a system, a system for coaching. Right? I hate it right there. I hate it. I hate the idea. I hate the idea of hiring a Japanese coach to teach the cadet team. Some nations do this and I get it. I get it, but I don't like it. I don't like it. The reason why I don't like it. Okay. Now hear me out. We're, we're talking early game. I'm going to get to this later. I'm going to get to this later, but we're early into this conversation still, but I'm going to get to it. The Japanese coach is a hundred percent 
ineffective in the American judo system. I'm going to tell you that right now. And I know everybody's looking at me going, well, what are you talking about? They got some of the best judo in the world. What do you mean they can't help us? They can't help us because we are not within driving distance of that guy. No matter what you pay that guy, I don't care what it is. I don't care if he lives here, right? Because we have some talent. Like, don't get me wrong. We've got some super talented Japanese guys already living in this country. Not only that, not only that, not even the Japanese. We have talented international world and Olympic medalists living in this country. You know what we do? You know what we do as a country? Here's what we do. Here's what we do. We say, hey, thanks for showing up. And then we walk away. You know why? Because nobody is actually doing the work to utilize these people. And the reason is, the reason is this. United States, remember, is the entire size of Europe. Now, hiring a Japanese coach is like telling you this. Why doesn't, why doesn't the state of Colorado pay that Japanese coach $50,000 a year to live in Colorado and coach the cadets? Because at least then, they're all within a few hours driving time of this guy. You can't possibly hire any actual coach, any actual coach that can actually go around to all these different locations and coach cadets, okay? The reason why my 75K guy works, the reason why my 75K guy works is because he's actually somebody that the American people would respect and know, that speaks the language, that buys into the system that I'm about to teach, okay? Because I'm not teaching you based on my promotion system, I'm not teaching you inside the competition system. I'm not teaching you the fluffy stuff. Like, I'm probably leaving out Hani Goshi. We're not even gonna, it, we're, it's not even in the system. If you're a competitor in the sport of judo in America, you're never gonna know what Hani Goshi is. Never gonna know, I'm gonna tell you that right now. We're done. We're done with it, not having it. You wanna be a martial artist? You are 100% gonna know that because I'm gonna preserve the knowledge with your grassroots, everyday, recreational martial artist, okay? That's the guy that needs to know Hani Goshi. The Japanese guy, I don't think, can actually travel around and actually bring together the American judo people. I don't think he can do it. I think everybody would treat him as an outsider, okay? And I don't think he would gather the same level of respect as an American who has been successful, okay? I think if you took Marty Malloy and you paid Marty Malloy $75,000 and you flew her around the country, okay? I think she would have a lot more of an impact than some random Japanese guy that went to Tokai University or went to Scuba University that was never even a member of the Japanese national team. Because those are the types of guys that are getting hired. I know because when I was at Tokai and I was training, I saw those guys. And then all of a sudden I went to Europe and then I saw those guys again as coaches. Because the university guys are looking for jobs when they graduate. So what they do is they take these international coaching positions and they travel around and they coach. And they're great judo players and they're great technicians. And I think that's that right there is, their, is how they slide into this system as a technician, as a technical advisor and a technical coach. Okay, somebody that lives at home and then trains. But we're gonna get to that later, okay? Because I'm not done with my plan yet. But right here, we gotta develop a coaching system. We gotta get back on topic here. We're an hour into this and I'm not even, I'm, I'm not even to all my programs yet. Correct, Jose, but that's the whole point of the promotion system is they get to be proactive and they get to actually go to events, right? And say, hey, who am I fighting? What do you mean? You go onto the base and you say, hey man, these are the events this guy has won. These are the people that he's beaten, right? This is how long he's been at this rank. This is how much weight he's put on the divisions he's fought over the last five years. 
Like all of that is relevant information when you're trying to get good at judo. You got to become a student of the game. And that, and that's what that system's going to do is it's going to give people all of that ability and all of that information instead of, instead of what they have right now, which is a national roster where it's got a name and some of the events they won. Because nobody could have shown up to those events and they're still on that list, right? They might have they might have beat three people. They might have beat three hundred people. You have no idea. So to be able to have that database, you know, in sync, gold mine, gold mine. Okay. But here, coaching, coaching system. The reason why this is so important. Okay. The reason why this is so important is because not everybody is an athlete. But that does not mean that they don't have a role in the system. Do you know why most of the coaches in America suck right now? Right? You know why most coaches are like cheerleader coaches where they're just like, yeah, come on, let's go, go get them. Yeah, come on, faster, faster, go, 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 go. And they're just screaming all this absurd stuff that actually has no technical ability to improve their player's outcome in the match. Your job as a coach is to provide technical advice to your athlete to improve their chances of winning. Now, mind you, there are some athletes, I've said this before, there are some athletes that need a cheerleader. And there are some athletes that are actually looking for help, right? They're looking for help. They actually need your help. They don't need you to be a cheerleader. I'm sure their mom is in the stands being a great cheerleader. They don't need the coach to be a cheerleader on top of the mom. But look, we need to develop coaching. We need to develop coaching in this system. Now look, now look, there are a few different levels of coaching here that are, that are important. Okay, first one, kids coaching. Now look, kids coaching, kids coaching. I am not talking about an adult teaching a kid. That's not what I'm talking about. I am talking about a kid teaching a kid. I'm talking about taking a 10 year old, taking a 10 or 12 year old, putting them on a mat and saying, hey man, you are an insistent instructor in my little baby class of like four and six year olds, right? You're twice their size, you're twice their age. Those kids, those kids that are between the ages of four and like seven, they're gonna look up to this guy who is between 10 and 15, right? And even though the kid has no athletic ability, right? He's not in this to be a competitor, right? He's the martial artist. He's the self-defense guy. And what I'm gonna do to keep him in the sport is I'm gonna actually make him a super good coach, right? A super talented coach. And he's gonna learn, he's gonna learn from a very, very young age. Super young age. Right? The reason is, is because I need him to make all of his mistakes before he's 18. Okay? I need him to make his mistakes. I need him to become a professional. Right? Because one of my other things on here is coming up and we're going to need this guy. We're going to need him. Okay? My next, my next role, my next role here for coaching. Okay? is the sensei. Sensei. And you're like, well, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? There is a difference. There is 100% a difference between a sensei and a coach. I need you to wrap your head around that. In the American judo system, moving forward, I want you to take this into consideration. There is a difference between a sensei and a coach. Okay. Would judoka flow between the three tracks as they age out of being a competitor to martial art it's self-defense or would they be distinct tracks? Thank you. Jeff. Yes. And they could leave at any point. They could leave at any point. They can go from self-defense to competitor. They can come into the sport as a martial artist. They can come into the sport as a competitor and leave as a full-fledged martial artist. All of those 100% can happen. I'm not telling them, I'm not telling them once they start, they're stuck. I'm saying, hey man, no matter how you feel, no matter how you feel, I can service your needs, 
right? If you want to be the martial arts guy, you want to be the dojo warrior, I got you. You want to feel like you can protect yourself when you go out with your wife, I got you. You want to win an Olympic gold medal, I got you. I can service everybody now because I've built the promotion system that'll teach you, the coach, it'll teach you how to service the community in which you live to drive up revenue for your school. Right? But here we go. So what we have to do, coaching system, is we have to develop good senseis. The difference, the main difference between a sensei and a coach, the sensei teaches you how to do judo. The coach, the coach teaches you how to win. There's a difference. There is 100% a difference. A sensei will teach you how to do judo. A coach will teach you how to win. Right? Super, super big mental breakthrough right here for everybody. Right? A sensei will teach you how to do judo. A coach is going to teach you how to win. And remember, we got three avenues of pr promotions now. So we got to figure out what type of coach you are. Are you a sensei? Are you going to teach people how to do judo? Are you going to teach people how to defend themselves? Or, or, do you want to be a coach? Do you want to be a coach? Do you want to go to work for me? You want to teach people how to win. You want to make the next Olympic champion. That's what you want. Is that what you want? Right? Now look. These are two different paths. These are two different credentials, right? Plus a third, plus a third. What does that do for me? What does that do for me? That is three avenues of revenue that do not exist in American Judo today. Right now what happens is we all, we all do the same thing. We all send in our coaches thing to USA Judo slash the people that will not be named because I don't need my phone ringing off the hook saying Travis get off YouTube. Right? But we send it out and what do we do? We get a little badge back in the mail. But you know what that does? You know what that does? It does nothing. It does absolutely nothing. You know why? Because none of you, none of you have actually earned the right to call yourselves a United States Judo coach. None of you. Myself included. Because you know what? I did nothing. I did absolutely nothing to earn the right to be a national level judo coach in America. Did nothing. 100% I did nothing. I'll tell you that right now. Maybe, now maybe my Olympic medal qualifies me to be a national coach, but I can tell you there's a bunch of other coaches out there that I personally know that have done nothing, nothing worthy of actually getting that credential. What I'm gonna do by making a system in which, guess what? You're going to pay for because if you want to coach your kids at the Nationals, if you want to coach your kids at your local events, you're going to pay for this because what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide so much value to you that people are going to pay you money because you have that. Because you have that credential, it has value because I'm actually going to help you. Okay? That's the difference. I'm not just going to give it to you because you're my friend. I'm not just going to give it to you because you've told me you've taught judo for 10 years. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how long you've done judo. It doesn't matter how long you've taught judo. What matters is your comprehension, right? And your actual ability to pull off the moves so that your students can understand clear directions and be able to walk away from any instruction and be able to do what you ask, right? There's platforms for this, okay? There's platforms for this. And this is what you want right here. If you're not doing this in your school right now, this is your gold mine right here. You empower all of your kids at this age, right? Richard, I don't disagree with you. USA Judo is doing nothing for coaches development, but I'm telling you, if I'm in charge, I'm on it. I'm on it, guys. I got it. I got you. I understand. 
I understand how important this is, which is why I paid that first guy 75K. I paid him 75K to go around and help unite the country with a common message, common goal, okay, to drive up revenue so that I can afford to get this system in place. So I can afford to get that promotion system in place because it's going to drive in more revenue, which is going to help me pay for the other projects that I got going on here, okay? But again, back to that online thing, this entire thing, I got some space down here. This entire thing lives online. It lives online, guys. Online, 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 online. Right here, because everybody, everybody should be able to see who's a national coach. You can do that now. You can do that now, but what you can't do now and what doesn't happen now is there is no system there is no system in place to help you go from a local coach to a regional coach to a national coach to an international coach to hopefully somebody that can actually be picked to win the Olympic Games, right? To help those kids, right? I would build a system that would help teach you how to go from teaching this kid to winning an Olympic gold medal. If that's what you want to do, I can help you get there with this system. You'll be able to take those kids, an army of athletes internationally and start winning medals because of this, this right here. You can do that, right? Then on top of that, you guys right now, you guys right now who think you're, you're rock solid, you're like, I don't need your help, Travis. I got it. I don't need you. I don't need your coaching system. I don't need it, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, you give me a 15 year old kid, a 10 year old kid right now in this system that understands it, that teaches it, right? He may not be better than you today, but you give him 10 years to when he's 22, 25, single, unmarried, willing to travel the world for 75K a year, he will outshine anything you've ever done today. Right, all you people out there coaching your local clubs, doing your thing, you figured it out on your own, you're trying to piece it together still, but there's a system. There is an actual system to winning with the resources we have right here in America and it's been proven and we can do it and we can systematically do it so that your kids, when they get good, they can get even better because there's not that delay in language. There's not that delay in learning. There's not that delay in expectation, right? We all do judo differently, but we all have to understand and speak it the same way. And it sounds crazy. It sounds crazy. But if anybody of you guys have been following any of my live like workshops for judo from like stances to movements to motions, all that stuff, all that stuff to me is stuff I expect somebody coming to me that says, hey, Travis, my goal is to win the Olympic Games. You better, that stuff I've been showing you, that better not be new to you. Because if it is, we're done. We're done. We can't, we can't win. Because you should have learned all that back here. You should have learned all that back here. If you're coming to me at 18, 19, 20 years old, 15, 16, you're trying to win a cadet world title, and the stuff in that video is new to you, we have a break. We're broken here. We're broken in that coaching system. Right? Right? I want to fix it. I want to fix it. Because what I'm saying is, as an athlete, as an athlete, you can compete any way you want. There are a million ways to win a judo match. Right? A million ways to win a judo match. But what I'm saying is, you have to understand the words that are coming out of my mouth when I am trying to help you on the mat. And that goes the same for anybody, right? The number one reason, the number one reason why you pay that guy, that first coach, the reason why you pay him 75K a year, because the most detrimental thing you can do to an athlete the most detrimental thing you can do to an athlete is put somebody in his chair that he doesn't trust. He or she, doesn't matter. That is why coaches internationally are paid because they need to be there day in and day out, guaranteed, 
guaranteed, right? Because it's going to build a relationship. It's going to build a level of trust between you, the athlete, and me, the coach. We're going to build that trust together. And if we don't have that trust in each other where if I, hey, I tell you to do something, you know I'm looking out for your best interest, okay? The reason why our system today is broken and why it really doesn't work is because the athletes of today don't trust the coaches of today. Because there's not enough together cohesiveness inside the country because we're broken. We are 100% broken. I don't care where you live. I don't care who you are. We're broken. I'm broken. You're broken. We're all broken. That's it. We're broken. Okay? You don't trust me. I don't think you, I don't trust you. That athlete over there doesn't trust me. That athlete over here doesn't trust me. My athletes trust me. Your athletes trust you. At the end of the day, if we're all saying the same thing, we're all saying like, we need to fix judo in America, we need to do it. Now look, now look, for coaching, right? We have very limited resources in the United States. Super, super limited, right? If, if right now, the way judo works in America, every athlete can take a personal coach, okay? It's possible, right? Most athletes are self-funded as of today, most of them, okay? There's only about three or four that are actually funded. Now, with the system here, the coaching system, we're gonna call it CS, okay? We need Mongolian coaches. I don't even know where that came from. I think we're broken. I think we're broken for this reason, okay? We're broken for this reason. Look, look, as an athlete, as a former athlete, right? The mentality of American judo, the, the mentality of American judo is poor me, poor me, right? I don't care who you are, I, I don't care. Like we can point fingers and don't, and don't pull out that one guy who's not, but we're all like, hey, poor me, right? And the money, the money, we have a ton of, by the way, for those of you guys who don't know, if you probably like added up all the Udonchikai money and all the money that are in the clubs in America, we have like a lot of money, like 10, 20, $50 million of like funds we could pull from to run American judo. The problem is, is it's all like super divided between like states and Yodanchikais and everybody's kind of like hanging on to it because nobody's sure what to do with it. So there's a ton of money in American Judo. Don't let anybody fool you. A lot of, a lot of these old Yodanchikais, a lot of these old clubs, they got huge bank accounts. Okay, so I, I know that for a fact. I've talked to a lot of the Yodanchikai members about bringing Project 2024 out. I've talked to them about sponsoring athletes. The problem is... The problem is, is they all want to do it themselves. Everybody wants that seat at the top of the table. Everybody wants that seat, that Olympic coaching job. Everybody wants that CEO position. We all want that. But what happens is, as athletes, we all go, hey man, I need some money to go to this event. I need some money to go to this event. And what happens is people hold seminars to raise money to get funds to go to some event that they probably don't need to go to, okay? And then what happens is the American people are now trained for years of this happening, right? And I don't think anybody meant anything by it. I think it's just something that nobody foresaw and it just happened, right? And I'm a product of it, 100% I'm a product of it. When I was a kid, when I was young, when I was 18, 19, 20, 22, 23 years old, I used to run seminars to raise funds for myself right? Selling posters, selling t-shirts, showing up to events, hustling to make four or 500 bucks to pay my rent. I used to be that guy. I'm there with you. I'm a product of the problem. Okay. And I get, I get it. I get it. The problem is, the problem is, is what it's done to the American judo public is it's taught us to pay people out of pity. Like, I feel bad that you can't go to this event that you claim you need to go to in order to do something, right? 
and the American judo population is so uneducated about how to actually qualify for the Olympics that they fork over the money because you said you were training for the Olympics and you needed to go to these events in order to qualify, right? And it's, and it's mind blowing because it's 100% not the case because nobody has actually sat down and put people in place to actually educate and put educated people. I'm not talking about like your college degree. I'm talking about judo educated, right? Yeah, the poor me analogy, right? Like, hey guys, they're not funding me to this event. Uh, it's not fair. Can you fund me? I need to, I need a GoFundMe page, right? I need to make a champ page. People send me money so I can go do this thing. Like, earn it. Earn it. The top people in this country are funded and the ones who aren't, aren't, right? And if you actually did your research, did your research and you actually looked at the stats of the people competing internationally for America, you would be shocked at just giving them money, right? Somebody went into my comment sections the other day and I, I was so angry. I was so angry when I saw it, right? I was so angry. I looked at it for like 10 minutes. I like typed out a paragraph. I deleted it. I typed out a sentence. I deleted it. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to tell him I disagree with you 100% because he feels or she feels, I have no idea if it's a male or female, that by going to event after event after event and losing all the time is heroic, honorable, right? Because you're always stepping up to the plate and you're always trying. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to teach you guys how to win how to win, right? There's a system. There's a system of winning, right? That is why, and you're going to call me crazy, but that is why if you took away all the back patches, right? If you took them off everybody's gi, I don't care. And you watch judo, the, the countries who are really talented, the countries who are really talented, you'll watch them do judo. And I guarantee you, most of the time, you could call them and tell me what country they're from. Because you can look at a guy and you can go, he's Russian. He does judo like a Russian. Oh, he's Japanese. He does judo like a Japanese person, right? That is why, that is why those countries have been labeled by doing judo a specific way because they have a system, guys. They have a system, right? Ronda Rousey did judo a specific way. Jimmy Pedro did judo a specific way. Kayla Harrison did judo a specific way. Marty Malloy did judo a specific way. Right? They all look different, but we all followed the same general guidelines in order to succeed. It's not just made up. It's not this thing. Right? That's why the Russians are good and why they can turn out champions all the time. We can do this. We can band together as a country and we can do this. That coaching system will do this because, because what it can do is it can be a huge revenue stream for us and it can be a huge membership stream for us because after the sensei and after the coaching thing, you know what the sensei one does for you? Right here. The sensei one, you know what that does? Is it allows every BJJ black belt who owns a school to take this course. Think about it. You could put judo into every jujitsu academy across the country. Just think about that. By having a coaching system, by having a coaching system, you could put coaches who coach professionally, mind you, all they do is sleep, eat, and coach. That's all they do. You could put a system in place with high level coaches who have been doing it for 10, 20 years professionally running professional schools, you could put judo in their school if you gave them the ability to learn judo and learn how to teach it. Again, I'm not asking a BJJ black belt. I'm not asking a BJJ black belt to go win me a national title in the sport of judo. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is you have the ability to teach. To teach, guys. To be able to teach the sport of judo is different than being able to apply the sport of judo in a competition scenario, right? It's different.
Jake, good question. I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna piss off a lot of people with my answer. Just as a little sneak peek. I'm gonna piss off a lot of people. But look, think about the revenue source. Think about the revenue source here really quick. If you took the time to develop a system of coaching, right? If you're a sensei, if you're a sensei, right? And my job, my job is to develop a system in which you have to pass levels or standards, depending on how you want to look at it. Again, not 100% thought out. We're talking conceptually here, right? But what if I said, you know what? White to green is level one. Now, what if, what if you took, you took that level and you charged and you charged, let's just say, let's say I charged $499 for it, $499 for you to have a certificate that allows you to coach as a U.S. national certified coach, level one, the sport of judo in your club. Think about what that selling point is. The National Federation, the Olympic Federation, certified you to be a coach at your club. Now, the reason why it's $4.99, okay, I'm making this up, by the way, I just totally pulled that number out of thin air because I haven't even thought about it. So don't even go in the comments and start roasting me about $4.99 is way too much. Because if you're running a professional school, that BJJ guy's going, you're telling me I can spend four hundred and ninety nine dollars four ninety nine and I can offer judo from the national federation is going to certify me think about think about the one-time fee he's paying of 499 think about it right and then think about what he's going to charge every kid that comes to his school right hundred bucks let's say let's say he starts a judo program in his school and he charges a hundred bucks a month. What happens when he puts 10 kids in his first class? 10 kids. Look how much money he's making. It's already paid for itself. Now, now just by writing it, by putting it online, by having this guy go through the online course and passing my test, he paid me $4.99 for the privilege. Now, mind you, I'm probably going to charge him $4.99 for the course. And I'm probably gonna charge him an additional fee to actually take the test because that actually takes somebody's time to actually sit and grade, which should be an additional cost. But he takes the course, we send him his certificate. Now look, he's got 10 kids in his judo program. You now have 10 new members within USA Judo paying you $700 because $700 a USA Judo membership 70 bucks. Now mind you, mind you, I want to privatize judo, big no. I don't know what you mean by privatize. Doug Williams, thank you. Spent more. Robert, like guys, I told you, I'm not, I'm not making this up out of thin air. I'm 100% not. If you guys thought I was just gonna pull out some wild and crazy nonsense today, you're wrong. You're wrong. This is th this is just like common business stuff. Like I'm not even college educated, but I understand how to like run a business and make money. I get it. Super easy to do because you actually you actually have value. You have value. You can actually improve people's lives. That has tremendous value, right? It's crazy. But look, super simple, level one. Level one, what, what happens if there are five levels to this? Five levels to a sensei. Five levels, you know what? You know why there's five? Because at some point, at some point as a sensei, as a sensei, you go through the generation, 
right? Because what I'm doing, what I'm doing to the judo population, which is why they don't like it, right? All you naysayers out there, the reason why you don't like it is because you don't want to admit what you don't already know. You think you know it all. You think you got all the answers. You just wanna, you just wanna show up, teach what you wanna teach. You wanna hang out. You don't even want, you don't even plan your classes, I bet. You probably, you probably get in your car to drive to the dojo, right? You probably get in your car, driving to the dojo, listening to the radio going, I wonder what I should teach today, right? Or, or what you do if you're right, right? If you're a little bit more systematic, if you're a little bit more systematic, maybe you're a little bit better. Maybe you go, man, so yesterday, yesterday what I did, yesterday what I did was I showed Uchimata, so maybe today I'll show a combination off of it. But there's no rhyme or reason as to what it is you're doing because you don't actually have a system in place to actually help your students improve. Right? It's crazy. And I know, I know a ton of people who do it. I know a ton of BJJ instructors that do it. They don't write it down. They don't plan it out. They don't have a system put in place that helps their students improve. The number one question as a school owner you're going to get asked when it comes to dealing with the sport, not about the payment for your membership, not about dues, not about that. I'm talking about the sport. The number one question that you will get asked by your students is what do I have to do for my next rank? What do I have to do for my rank? You know why? Because people actually show up wanting to feel like they're improved. And the way we do that in martial arts is we give them belts and we give them ranks that say, hey man, you're actually improving. Right? And they feel good about themselves and they come back for more and they keep trying to learn more because it creates this feeling of worth. Right? They feel good. It's a good feeling. It's a nice little dopamine rush when you get promoted. It lasts about two and a half weeks. Right? I get it. I get it. But look, the level of coaching right? There's a bracket for teaching your students. And then you go down, you go down this path to, to coaches. You go down this path, you go from students to coaches. So the reason why there's a one, two, three, four, five is because when you hit level one, you're teaching beginners. When you hit level two, you're teaching your intermediates. When you hit level threes, you're teaching your advanced. When you hit level four, you're ready. You are ready to turn your intermediate into your basic instructor, right? Into your basic instructor. When you hit level five, you're ready to turn your advanced player into your intermediate, right? You can, you can follow this groove here where you can charge people because every time they get one of these certifications, you can charge all of your intermediate judo players a premium in order to teach the younger kids because what you're doing is you're giving them authority over a group of people and you're empowering that person, right? Teaching them responsibility, one of the pillars of martial arts, responsibility, right? It's more than just who beats up who. It's more than that. A hundred percent wrong. If you don't give enough medals, belts, you're going to lose kids, parents, a hundred percent wrong. 100% wrong. I tell all my BJJ students, I tell all of them, I say, Hey guys, it might be a while before you get your next belt. But I'll tell you what, when you get it, everybody on the planet is going to know you earned it. I give nothing out. I don't care. I don't care if you're a 10 year blue belt. It don't matter to me. You're going to earn a purple belt and everybody who sees you wear that purple belt, they're going to know. You have to have standards. And what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the blame off of you. I'll take the blame onto why your kids aren't getting promoted by all means. It's your responsibility as a sensei 
to help them perform the acts I require in order to hit that next rank, right? And the great thing about that statement, right? The great thing about that statement is when I take on the responsibility and all the blame, you can actually be their best friend. And you can say, hey man, I get it. They're kind of jerks, they're not really lenient, I get it. Hey man, how about we do a couple of private lessons and I'll help you catch up the speed to pass your test. Boom, I just made you 300 bucks, 100 bucks an hour to work out with the head coach of a club to help their kid pass their test. Super valuable, super valuable. I just gave you a free ride into private lessons from all your students. Think about the value of that. You got 100 students at your club, right? 20 of them are up for promotions, right? At 100 bucks an hour during the week, right? That's a ton of money, right into your pocket, hard-earned cash. You know why? Because you deserve it because you are doing a service for these people, right? So that coaching course, that coaching system, super valuable, right? Ton of revenue opportunity. We have multiple levels of coaching. We have multiple levels of responsibility. We're charging our students extra to become coaches in class. Right? Like, I'll just give it to you guys. Now, this brings me to my next, my next topic that I think is super valuable. Super valuable, okay? Who would be texting me right now? Jesus, they not know I'm on YouTube ranting about fixing USA Judo? Jesus. Now look, event system. Event system, okay? We have to get out of the Stone Age. We have to get out of the Stone Age, okay? This will do it. We can get a software, right? They're out there. Everybody's using it right now. I'm not talking about making one from scratch, okay? I'm talking about being able to download an app that'll tell you when your match is. I'm talking about being able to put in your information and store it so that when you register for your next event, it's already populated, right? It already exists. The only thing that we need to do is we need to make sure this system goes into our online athlete catalog, all right? The database that lives on the website. That way, all of your matches and all of your film from your matches, because it feeds into the system, it'll go right into your profile. No different than Judo Base already does, but we need to do it nationally. That way, all those kids and all those coaches can come back to that site and rewatch all their matches, no questions asked. Again, driving that revenue stream because what I can do now is I can actually rent out this service, right? All my USA Judo events are gonna run on it, okay? They're all gonna run on this system, right? But you might wanna run your own event and maybe you wanna run it underneath our flag, underneath the USA Judo flag, and you want it to be a USA Judo event, right? You can rent my software, right? And it'll be plug and play, be ready to go. And all of the fights, right? All of the athletes that come to your event will be able to watch their fights later on. That's a selling point for your event. I can guarantee you that. Everybody wants to go back and they wanna be able to call their grandmothers, their girlfriends, their friends, their college roommates. They wanna be able to call everybody they know. Hey man, tune in and watch me. Where do you go? Guess what, you go to my website which drives traffic, which drives revenue, which drives SEO right? Event system. Super important. Thank you, Chief Pride, Track Wrestling. It already, like guys, this already exists. I'm not crazy. I'm not making this stuff. I'm not making this up. I'm not just pulling it out of thin air like some concept that hasn't already been proven. It already works. It already works. The downside the downside right now is USA Judo's broke. 
So what I did at the very start was I put a coach in play that can actually drive the revenue stream to start funding these different programs and you can just start knocking them off. You can go boom, I hired a coach, 75K. That coach actually cost me 93 because I had to pay for his travel. No problem because the coach brought me back 130. Okay, now I have $130, $130,000 in the bank. Now I can get that promotion system up on board. Now every month when promotions are running through the system, I'm making revenue. All these times, all these people that are starting to become USA Judo members to get their memberships up and their promotions running through the system, we're making more money. Great, now I put this coaching system into play and then boom, that's when I ramp it up, okay? I ramp it up because not only am I gonna help the coaches who are currently involved in Judo, I'm gonna try to put Judo into every Jiu Jitsu school across the country, right? By certifying those BJJ black belts to teach their kids how to do judo who are gonna show up to my events, who are gonna build an online profile, pay for a membership, come to my website to rewatch their matches and share it to all their social media platforms in turn, in turn, right? Growing the awareness of judo across the country because we can actually win that, okay? We're just, we're just starting that fire, right? Now look, once you got all that done, once you got all that done, we come into this last little part here, okay? The last little part. It's a two-part system. It's a two-part system. Now look, my hands are covered in this, okay? I don't, I don't know what this stuff is. But look, we have a two-part system. Here we go. And this is gonna piss off a lot of people. This is gonna piss off a lot of people. Centralized training program. I said it. We're doing it. Centralizing. We're going to pick a place. We're going to pick a place. And we're going to make we're going to make it mandatory now. Mandatory. Okay? That everybody every competitor that wants funding from the United States Judo, okay, USA Judo, in order to try to qualify for Pan Ams, Cadets, Junior Worlds, Senior Worlds, I don't care what world thing you wanna go to. If you want my money, you want my funding, you want my support, you're training here. Right here. Wherever this is, okay? I'll, if it's me, if it's me, I'm picking Boston. I'm picking Boston. And a lot of people are gonna be up in arms about that. And I get it. But that's what I would do, okay? Number one reason, number one reason, is Jimmy and Big Jim have been the most successful coaches in United States history, okay? Yep, there's my thumbs down. I knew it was gonna happen, but it's just, it's what I would do. There is, There are not too many other coaches who are as involved as involved as those two, okay? There are other hurdles that you would have to overcome in order to do that, okay? Location being one, resources being another, but that would be my top choice. It's not the end-all be-all. I can be convinced of something else, but when you talk about like the number of coaches and the resources and the stuff that they have within their location on a professional level, there's not too many other places you could actually pick. Okay, which brings me to my other point. Okay, because somebody talked about it earlier. What about hiring a Japanese person to come in? This is when I would do it. This is when I would do it because I wouldn't take that guy on the road. I wouldn't have him travel around. I would have him day in and day out inside the dojo teaching all of my national level competitors technique. Like straight up fundamentals. This is how you do it technique. That way you could take a guy like me, right? Could you be convinced of Glenville? I could be convinced of anything. It's like you could convince me San Jose State, you could convince me OTC, you could convince me Lake Placid, you could convince me of Keats Society. There's a lot of different like options for a lot of different reasons, right? There's so many different like possibilities, right? 
It's not, it's not even a question of, of like where it is. I'm just saying as of right now, that would be my choice because the record speaks for itself. That's, that's my only reason. I mean, one of the bonuses, right, Jake, because Glenville also has it, is it is super close to Montreal to train with the Canadians who are also one of the up and coming teams um, on the IJF circuit. I don't think they're top notch just yet, but they're, they're getting there, right? They, they're putting systems in place. But I'm not, I'm 100% not, right? They're like, we, USA Judo tried it years ago with like Harlingen, Texas or like somewhere else because they felt like they could afford it, but people didn't want to go there and live there. I'm saying I would demand it. I would 100% make every athlete, every athlete sign a contract that says you have to be here. Right now, now look, that comes with stipulations that comes with stipulations because some people, some people can't leave their home, right? There are also, there are also some other things into factor, right? Some people as of today are already in their own mind, successful on the IJF circuit and that's okay. That's okay. We would, I would put a line item in that says, Hey, if you're a world medalist, if you're a grand slam medalist, if you're a Pan Am champion, if you're a Pan Am games, gold medalist, you know, some things of that nature, then you can pick where you want to train and your funding still comes in. Right. But if you want your salary, if you want your funding, you got to live here. Bottom line, because what it's going to do is it's going to take the limited number of people we have today. Cause I would have all these steps. I would have all these steps done by the time my cadet team became a junior. That would be my goal. I'd have all these programs in place by the time my cadet team became the junior team, right? When they moved up in age bracket. Cause once they make that jump, I gotta find a new guy. I gotta find a new guy for 75K to repeat the process, right? And start traveling and start doing all those other things. But, but with the centralized program, I would hire, I would hire regional, regional, right? Training coaches, okay? For anybody who is familiar with the Canadian system, they have something like this, right? Regional training coaches, right? They would, they would be in charge of a certain area and running camps, clinics, and scouting. Okay, and they would have to feed people into this. And they, they can be hired and they can be fired because I would pay these people money. As a national governing body, I'm gonna pay these people money, right? And then that's, I'm paying them for the sole right that I can fire them. This isn't volunteer work. This isn't you come and you go as you please. Like you have an actual job, you have guidelines, and you have things you need to be able to do. And your job, your job would be to raise the level in your region, right? We're gonna raise the level in the region to where enough athletes, maybe it's four, maybe it's five, maybe it's 10, whatever it is, you'd have to raise enough athletes and get them to move to here, right? You would have to raise enough athletes, put on enough camps, training camps, right? A camp would be somewhere where you show up and fight and get in shape, where a clinic is somewhere where you would show up and actually teach people how to do judo, okay? Two different types of events. You would have to run enough of those and field the team. You would have to show up to all the local regional events, okay? Mind you, some are not on the same weekends, right? We'd probably have to make a calendar. And then you would have to scout and help your regional team in order to produce people to come here. Okay, again, hired and fired. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow me to hire that Japanese guy. It's gonna allow me to get all my coaches under one roof. It's gonna allow me to talk and be hands on with everybody where we can sit in a room like this one and we can actually plan out what is best. What are the trends in judo? What is it that we're seeing from this country? What is it we're seeing from this person? Hey. 
I'm having trouble in the 57 kilo division getting my athletes to be able to beat these types of players. How do we do it? What do we have to do in practice? How can we segment the practices to make sure my 81, 90, and 100 kilo guys are getting the best types of things they need for their events coming up where my juniors are gonna be a month after and they need a different style of practice. You can do those types of things. Jake, I 100% do not think there is, which is why it would be one of the last things on my pillar to do. I wouldn't just put a program in place and say, hey, you gotta pick up and move. I would have to, I would have to get the, I'd have to get coach one on board to scout and ban the country together. I'd have to get the promotion system in place. I'd have to get the coaching system in place because I'm gonna pick those regional coaches based on that coaching system. They're gonna go through it, they're gonna pass it, and then I'm gonna be able to see and I'm gonna be able to follow and I'm gonna have that data, right? Because when they're in the coaching system, they're gonna have their athletes and their team listed. And I'm gonna be able to see the stats on all those people, right? And then what I'm gonna be able to do is I'm gonna be able to compare and contrast the actual numbers where I can make like a business decision. I can put it on a spreadsheet and I can say, this is your win percentage, this is your loss percentage, this is how many times your athletes win by opponents, this is how many times your athletes win on Cheetos. And I can say, you're the guy, based on the stats of your athletes that I want in charge of this region, right? Because I don't care about the gold medals because I wanna know how they're winning. I wanna know if they're throwing people free pwn, if they're winning in Nawaza. I wanna know if they're just eking out all their wins on Cheetos and he's a conditioning freak. I don't need that. I need a guy at this level who's a technician that understands the sport that can get his people to actually score pwns. I, I can, the guy up here, right? The guy who's in charge of this training center, he can teach them how to win. The problem is, is if you teach somebody who's green at the grassroots level, all they have to do is win. You teach them strategy. You teach them that little trick that gets them to win. You teach them too soon. They're not going to have the fundamentals up here and they're not going to want to go back and then relearn the fundamentals here, right? They're not going to do that. They're going to say, no, I'm good. I know how to win. I have the strategy. I have this trick. I got this thing. And then when they, get, when they get to the big leagues, when they get to the Grand Prix, Grand Slams, they struggle to win because they're not strong. They're not in that great a straight. Their technique's not that good. And their tricks aren't really that tricky, right? They work here great. They may work on the national level, but when you go beyond that, that doesn't fly. It doesn't fly anymore. You have to have good, solid foundations in order to compete internationally. And I want a coach here that can do that. And I think we have them. I think we have them. But what I don't think we have in this country is an actual system where those coaches are all helping each other because I want the kid from California, the kid from Florida, the kid from Texas, the kid from Chicago, I want them all to understand the guy who's in charge here. And I wanna make sure that language is the same, right? When somebody says, hey, come out and steal the sleeve, it's gotta mean something. When somebody says, snap the gi, it's gotta mean something and it doesn't mean the same thing to everybody. When I say cross grip, what does that mean? Your first question should be, well, is it right on right or is it left on right? Hey, Blinken, 100% it hampers current judokas. Like I said in the beginning, I would start at the cadet level and I would trim the fat and say, if you're a junior onward, you're on your own. You're on your own. You're not, you're not worth my time anymore. Because right now what USA Judo has done is they basically left them to fend for themselves anyways. Right? So like they're done. It is what it is. And then, right, some of you guys are asking about including cadets. I wouldn't necessarily include cadets here, but it would be mandated that they have to show up to specific camps. And if they don't, because one of the things I believe in is even if you're injured, you got to show up to camp. I'm going to budget out your plane ticket, your hotel, and if you got a broken ankle, I want you to get on that plane with your cast and your crutches, and I want to see you, and I want you to see my therapist, and I want to watch you do all your physical therapy, right? I want you to be a professional. I want to make sure you're getting the best treatment possible. So I want to make sure you're here seeing all the people that USA Judo has deemed in charge of this team to make sure that you have what you need in order to win an Olympic gold medal, okay? I wanna make sure that that is possible, right? None of this like, oh, I'm injured, I'm not gonna to come to camp. I'm not doing that. None of this like, oh, I can't make weight anymore. I don't care if you're injured and got a broken wrist. You're gonna step on that scale even if you can't compete, 
right? I'm going to make it so that you have to do those things. And if you don't, your money is gone. Your funding is gone. We're done. That's it. Cut the cord. Cut the fat. We don't have the resources to please everybody. I don't care. And none of this works. None of this works if everybody gets super butt hurt because they're not this guy, right? Like somebody here in the chat, Jose, is like, I know my role and I don't mind being a stepping stone. You're not a stepping stone. You're not a stepping stone. You're just part of the path, guys. You're part of the path, right? If you love, if you absolutely love helping people and teaching people judo, this may not be for you, right? Because what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grow your school. Some of us, some of us, right, we'll make less money because what we're actually driven by is winning. We love winning, love, love, love winning, right? So you're gonna take a pay cut to be this guy because you're not gonna be able to run a school with four or 500 people, right? In your local area, if you're focused on outside people instead of focused on the business, right? If you love helping a community and you like making money, you're gonna to wanna to be down here in the grassroots Opening up a judo school once every two years, potentially. Heck, some people do more than that. But there's no reason why you couldn't because you know why? Because I gave you a coaching course. I gave you a coaching course that's going to help you train somebody to take over that school in a couple years. And then you can go 10 miles down the road and you can open up another school. And then you can get 150 more students and then you can train that next group up and you can stop in on your old school because it's so close. And you can put five or six different schools in a given radius of each other where you can actually feed the system. And you can start running in-house events and dojo battles and all these different things and you can actually start merchandising and all that stuff. The last thing, the last little bit, once I get this down, once I get this down and I centralize in like a year or two, probably two years, the next thing I would launch, the last thing, my grand finale here, the last thing I would do, right? Right, the last thing I'm gonna do. I would turn USA Judo into a dojo consulting agency slash USA dojos, okay? Where I would go to my sponsors and I would negotiate price breaks for everybody. Like none of this like $100 a year to be a USA Judo, none of that. Not even worth it for us. It's not worth it for me. It's not worth it for you. For you to get a K&K &K insurance, it's going to cost you $1,300 a year right? I'm, I'm going to charge you more, but I'm going to give you more, right? I'm going to give you more. I'm going to, I'm going to allow you to either buy a dojo in a box where I'm going to give you the membership system. I'm going to give you the website. I'm going to give you the logo. I'm going to give you the mats. I'm going to give you the crash pad. I'm going to give you the deal on the geese for merchandising. I'm gonna give you the deal on the rash cards. I'm gonna give you all those price breaks, right? So that you can come to me, you can put down your deposit, and we get in a payment system so I can get your dojo up and running faster, okay? And then you'll be an official USA Judo Dojo. And we can start building those across the country. And we can start getting people on payment plans where they can get memberships because I'm gonna have a consulting agency, right? That's gonna help you. They're going to help you with your social media. They're going to help you with your Facebook advertising. They're going to help you with your copywriting, right? We're going to give you all of the classes you need from the curriculum, right? From the promotion system, there's a curriculum, not a franchise, not a franchise, right? I mean, we could consider it one. You could, all intensive purposes, you could. 
right? But even if you had your own school, again, Dojo Consulting, right? You need help with your logo, you need help with your copywriting, you need help with your Facebook ads, your Instagram ads, you need to figure out how to break through into your market, right? You, you're having trouble reaching a certain age demographic, we're gonna help you get through that because at the end of the day, we can't succeed as USA Judo if the grassroots dojo does not succeed. All right, so I'm gonna make it a priority. Once I get the system in place that can turn out those athletes, I'm gonna put a system in place that can help the grassroots dojos grow. That way there's always people there to feed that system. No, Robert, I would not make it mandatory. I would make it an offer. If you wanna go out and buy your own mats, get your own merchandise, do all your own stuff because you got it all on lockdown, no problem. Never gonna stop you. This is for the people. This is for the people that are afraid, right? They're nervous. Most, most judo people are super nervous. They're really timid when it comes to opening up a dojo. It's a big investment. I know because I just did it. It's a super big investment. And they're just, they're unsure because they've never done it before, right? The fear of the first time, right? You're super nervous, right? So we'll basically help, help you get that started. Right? And we'll be able to help you along that journey where you're not alone. I'll alleviate that fear because we've done it before. I know people that run successful gyms. Right? We can all get together and we can help you because when you succeed, I succeed. Right? As a country, it's not about my school is better than your school. It's about without your school, my school suffers. Right? There's the healthy competitiveness. But right now, What's happened in USA Judo is you spend a hundred bucks and you get an insurance and you get a banner for your dojo and you get nothing else. You get no support, right? We need to make sure that there's value added so that when people see that you're an official USA Judo dojo, it means something, right? You get to charge more money per membership because you are. You're this thing that everybody wants to be. You're a differentiator inside the market because you're an official USA Judo Dojo, right? It adds value to the system. And this would be my last, my last piece of the pie here, right? After I've gotten all these things set up, after I've hired my first coach, after I've gotten Project Gold underway with the cadets, right? I've gotten my promotion system in place. I've gotten my curriculum in place. I've gotten my coaching system in place. I've gotten it into the BJJ schools. I've turned all those black belts into judo coaches at the grassroots level to spike the membership, right? I've put my event system in place so that people can start running events super smooth. It all goes into this online database for all these athletes' profiles where all their matches are secured, right? And you can actually charge more for all of your events because those matches are recorded and stored right into their profile, right? All those things can happen, right? It just takes a few people actually working at growing the sport of judo in America, right? And then once I've done all that, boom, we hit the centralization for all the top athletes. We make them train together because right now you're taking the top athletes and you're training them with amateurs instead of putting all those top athletes training with top athletes. The best countries in the world are centralized, right? And I'm even gonna go as far as to say Japan is centralized, and I know you guys think I'm crazy because you're gonna say they all train at their own colleges, but at the same time, they are all training within a train ride or a car ride of each other, for the most part, right? Not to mention the number of world and Olympic champions and like the number of people that they have in all of those colleges at a high level is different than the rest of the world. But even a place like Paris, right, in France, technically not centralized, like yes, you have to train at INSEP, but most of the judo is happens right in Paris. That's where all the big major clubs are, right? So again, picking that city that can support the local club growth along with that national training center so that the local population can come to that national centralized location on certain days of the week, right? You open it up to train with the higher level people Give your, give your national team a break 
from beating up each other to beating up some of the local population and making some of those local population guys come in and feel like heroes, right? Because they get to be a part of it. They get to help you, right? Being able to bring in the local population coaches once a week, right? France does that. I remember when I saw it for the first time, every Friday, every Friday, 10 a.m., all the coaches in the area used to be able to come into the inset and then be able to stand on the side of the side of the mat and watch and actually watch the higher level coaches interact with all of their athletes so that they could learn and evaluate and take back all the tips and tricks and coaching methods that they're giving to their athletes so they can go back and help their other players, right? You got to make sure that the area that you pick can actually service all of these different needs. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And then once I got through the cadets, remember, mind you, I would want all of this done by the time that cadet team hit the junior team. So you'd have about two or three years to pull off doing all of this. It would be a massive undertaking, massive, massive undertaking, but it would take a buy-in from the community and a startup, <coughs> right? A startup of about 60 to $75,000 to hire that first guy. And as of right now, I don't even know who that first guy would be. I have no idea. I offered it, I offered it back in 2016. I offered it 50K to the JF to start this process for them and then they ignored it. And then I offered, I offered all this to USA Judo. I've had this entire conversation with you know the powers that be at USA Judo. Again, not naming names because I don't want to get in trouble. But I've had this conversation. I've actually put all the numbers out on a spreadsheet. I've put out calendars, I've put out dates, I've put out teams, I've put out contracts sent it all there just to say no not doing it they want no part of any of this and that's fine but this would be my plan if i was gonna fix usa judo and try to turn it into a powerhouse right an internationally recognized symbol again where people when you stand on the side of the mat and nobody's ever seen you before and they see an american flag on the gi there's a re level of respect given to that flag where they know you're talented. And I think that starts by taking on our cadets and professionalizing the system in America. So that's all I got for today. I was right on time. I said it would take about two hours. So there you have it. Until next time, guys, I'll be doing, I think a live, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna do a live judo class tomorrow night at 8.30. Because I got my dojo all set up again, so it's fresh, it's clean, it's ready to go. We can go back in there and start filming some more YouTube stuff. But until tomorrow, I'll see you guys later.